Good morning, beloveds. You done? Okay. As usual, distracted by cats. Okay. Um, it is May 10th. Our title is I Make a Difference. The first quote is Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. And that is Psalm 63 7. The next one is To the degree that we do embody reality, we become poised and powerful. And that is the science of mind 447. Scientists have discovered the subtle influence that the observer exerts upon the observed in experimental situations. The inference we can draw is that nothing which is seen remains unaffected or untouched by the one seen. The watcher and that which is watched are two aspects of one interaction. Similarly, in our own life experience, we affect every person we touch, every interchange in which we are a part of. Knowing our actions will have an impact, we need to give some careful thought to what we do. Have we smiled at the passing stranger lately, touched a loved one a little more gently, or lingered a bit longer when we heard loneliness in the voice of a co-worker? We do make a difference. The God in us influences the God in others wherever we go. Surely this is one way the creative presence expands as we freely acknowledge it in all activities. Uh, God creates all that is, and I daily use the divine wisdom in all that I think, say, and do. I let myself be in the place where spirit comes forth freely, easily, and lovingly. All is God interacting with itself. I am a part of life's dance, and all is beautiful to me. I am a light for good everywhere I go. Thank you, God, for my wonderful life. And that is MS, which is Margaret Stoltz. Um, so what we're looking at, I make a difference. Um, it's, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. It's a reminder that we touch people when we interact with them, even if our interaction is brief, uh, like the, the smiling at a passerby. So one of my goals in this world is to be an island of peace and calm. Am I always an island of peace and calm? Of course not. <laughs> I was a redhead. There's a reason why we have a stereotype um, for the stereotype that we have. Um, but bless you. All right. Okay. Um, but that's, it's what I work on. It is what the point of my spiritual practice every single day is, is to calm and center and ground myself so that when I go out and I interact with people, um, that I am calm, I am peaceful, I am loving, I am compassionate, I am kind, I am all of those things. Um, and if you're familiar with Eckhart Tolle, his concept of pain bodies, uh, that's where a lot of interactions can get really interesting in that um, he talks about our pain bodies, one, attracting each other and two, rubbing up against each other. And and you'll notice that when you're kind of in a rotten mood, it's like everybody around you is in a rotten mood. Um, and so then it's up to me to make sure that I have my pain body in check. Because I'm human and I'm having a human, uh, you know, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience and I'm in pain occasionally or sometimes more often than that. And so what I want to do is make sure that I check that pain body and go, all right, you know, what do I need to do to manage whatever this is, be it physical pain, emotional pain, you know, mental pain, whatever. Um, what do I need to do to make it manageable so that I'm not inflicting my pain body on the people that I come up with? Uh, come across. Um, and then the other thing it's and from the other side of the, the equation is, is when you are encountering other people's pain bodies, what you want to do is remember no matter how they are acting, that they are beloved children of God. Um, and so when you are a soft place to fall is one of the terms that I've heard that I really like. 
um, when you are that island of peace and calm and what have you, uh, then, you know, while you can't take away their pain, you're not creating more. And that's, that's a real thing because we can't take away other people's pain, but what we can do is not to create more. We can, cause you know, when our pain bodies rub up against each other, that's friction, which creates more pain. So, um, when we remember that they are beloved children of God, no matter how they are acting, then we can say, all right, I, I see you. I see you for who you are. I understand that you are having an experience and I'm not going to add to it. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to stick around. <laughs> you know, when people's pain bodies are up, then sometimes the best thing you can do is leave them alone. And honestly, that's the what I try and do is, you know, when I have... Uh, when my pain body is really bad, then what I want to do, if I cannot manage it and I cannot act like a decent beloved child of God, then what I do is I try and remove myself from the situation. So, and that's things that we can do. All right. So our title is, uh, I make a difference. And then the first one, the Psalm, I love, sometimes the Psalms are just like, what? And sometimes this one makes sense. Especially when you take them out of context, you know, you've got one line out of an entire psalm. But this one, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings, I will rejoice. When we know who we are, when we know who we are turning to, and we are turning within to the source of our own being, we are turning within to that spirit that created us. Okay, so that's Psalm 63, 7. And then... Um, to the degree that we embody and it's reality with a capital R, we become poised and powerful. When we know who we are, when we act as if, when we know who we are, um, we do better. We do better. And so that is the science of mind, page 447. Okay, so scientists have discovered the subtle influence of the observer, exert the subtle influence that the observer exerts upon the observed in an experimental situation. It's, it, and the, the, a lot of that is coming out of quantum physics. It's like when you're watching an electron, it will do different things than when you are not watching the, the electron. But even when you're not watching the electron and you have a recorder recording it, it still changes the behavior of the electron. So that's just one of those things. The observer always has an effect, always. Uh, and you know, when you're being watched, you know, d does it change your behavior? The in inference we can draw is that nothing which seems, which is seen remains unaffected or untouched by the one seeing. The watcher and that which is watched are two aspects of one interaction. Similarly, in our own life experience, we, we affect every person we touch, every person we touch, even if it is just the briefest interaction when, you know, when you bump up, when you bump up against somebody, the, the, the polite thing to do is to say, excuse me, um, cause you don't know what kind of day that person's having. And even if they bumped into you, if you can kindly say, excuse me, or I'm sorry, or whatever, then, you know, it, if they're having a rough day, it can go a long way to making, um, it, it, it can go a long way to, and like I said, sometimes the best we can do is not increase their pain body. Uh, every interchange that we are a part of, knowing our actions will have an impact. We need to give some careful thought to what we do, which is the point of spiritual practice. If you keep up with your spiritual practice, if you recognize yourself as a beloved child of God, if you recognize others as a beloved child of God, then you are creating that second nature. Like I like to do that with, with the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself. You are creating a first response. You are creating a default setting so that you always have that when you interact. So, it's already ingrained. Sometimes ruts are a bad thing, but when ruts aren't a bad thing, they're called a groove. So are you in a rut? Are you in a rut? Or are you in a groove? And your interactions with people can definitely be a groove, but you've got to do the work. 
You've got to do the spiritual practices. You've got to practice and be aligned with the qualities of God, which are peace, creativity, love, harmony, joy, happiness. You know, all of those. When you are in that alignment more often than not, then your actions will reflect that and you don't have to stop and think. And that's one of the reasons why when I suggest that spiritual practice, I say, take three deep breaths before you speak. Because frequently it's when we respond, when we react without thinking is when our pain bodies are rubbing together. If we stop, take those three deep breaths or heck, even just one deep breath and actually respond, then we have thought about our actions. Even if it is deeply subconscious, when we take that deep breath, then we are aligning ourselves with spirit before we respond. Okay. Have we smiled at the passing, passing stranger lately, touched a loved one more gently, or lingered a bit when we hear loneliness in the voice of a coworker? And some, I'm one of those people that like complete strangers will tell me their, their life story because they recognize in me a listening heart. And so sometimes when I have those conversations with people, um, that I don't know, you know, it's just because for a minute they needed to be heard. And that's what we all want in the long run. We want to be, we want to be seen. We want to be heard. And sometimes a brief interaction with a stranger, we'll never know the good that we do when we give that gift, but it's worth it. We do make a difference. The God in us influences the God in others wherever we go, which is why we want to do our spiritual work. Surely this is one way to make, this is, surely this is one way the creative presence expands as we freely acknowledge it in all activities, knowing who we are. All right. So Margaret's treatment. God creates all that is, and I daily use divine wisdom in all that I think, say, and do. That is the point of spiritual practice, to plug in. I let myself be in the place where spirit comes forth freely, easily, and lovingly. All is God interacting with itself. I am a part of life's dance, and all is beautiful to me. I am a light for good everywhere I go. Thank you, God, for my wonderful life. All right, so that's Margaret Stoltz. I make a difference. You make a difference. Um, and <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you an easy mission today because it's one that probably most of us do anyway, but I want us to think about it when we do it, and that is the mission today should we choose to accept it is to smile at the passing stranger and recognize who we are and who we are smiling at. Let's interact as the capital R for reality. Let's know who it is. As Jesse likes to say, Jove no nods to Jove, which is the point of namaste. Namaste means the God in me recognizes the God in you, recognizes and acknowledges the God in you, the spirit in you. So that's what we're, the mission today is namaste. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then because I've already talked at length uh, of the spiritual practice, always I encourage the spiritual practice every day of doing something loving, something kind, something compassionate. As I said, I've already talked at length, <laughs> at length about that. So I'm going to let that one go. Just the reason I rec that, that I suggest that spiritual practice and you can do the same thing every day or different every day is because you deserve your own love, your own kindness, your own compassion. And it is about creating that first response, that default setting so that we don't have to think so much about our interactions with people because we're already in that groove that will allow us to do it kindly, compassionately, lovingly in that God aligned way. So, um, because we're drawing from a bank that we've been depositing in every day. All right. Uh, as always, I do encourage you to do something, uh, so to do, do something to engage your mind and your body, to 
go get that bright light first thing in, early in your day um, and to drink plenty of water and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around you all the time. Um, and honestly, Emma gives the best advice. Look for the good and praise it. Look for the good and praise it. Okay, beloveds. Uh, I'm going to move into the process of my day. Oh, okay. And figure this out. <laughs> and we'll move on. So, um, yeah. I, my mind just shorted out. It's all right. It's all good. So, have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, an enchanting day, a magical day, a smiling at the passing stranger day, a recognizing who you are day, um, a knowing the observer day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. So take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. Find us on the social medias. You know where we are. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark, and I am the Running Rev Ryan, and we are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and TikTok. I'm not on TikTok yet, but I'll get there eventually. Um, clearly, I have no issues making videos. Uh, it's just short videos. <laughs> so there was something else. I don't know what it was. So Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.